So this is part two of the video about the 2012 annual letter from Bill Gates. So let's talk about AIDS and the Global Fund. Bill says there's three large goals of the AIDS community. Number one is reduce the number of new infections. So the goal is by 2015 to have 1 million infections per year. This would be a 68% decline since 2002. The second goal is to provide drugs to those infected. In 2011, 1.8 million people died from AIDS. The third goal is find a cure. Unfortunately, this is viewed as so difficult that we should not count on it. So let's talk about the first goal, reduce infection. So he talks about five approaches to reduce infection. The first is convince people to avoid risky behavior. Yet unfortunately, the impact of education efforts is uncertain. The second is male circumcision to reduce infection. This reduces HIV transmission by up to 70%. He says over 1 million men aged 15 through 49 have been circumcised in 14 southern and eastern African countries with large AIDS epidemics. Unfortunately, this is only 5% of the total number who could benefit. He says new devices, Prepax and Shangring, simplify the procedure and make surgery unnecessary. It says leadership is being shown by Kenya, Botswana, South Africa, and Tanzania by getting the message out. It says in particular, Kenya has made the most progress by circumcising 70% of eligible men. Bill says he'll be very disappointed if by 2015 any fewer than 15 million young men have chosen to get circumcised. So the third way to reduce infection is come up with a drug that reduces chances of becoming infected. He says studies were promising, but patient compliance and implementation in the field remains major challenges. The fourth way to reduce infection is with a drug that reduces chances of infecting others. So this is treatment for perfection, prevention. So it's people who have uh, gotten AIDS and take drugs, drugs to prevent transmission. So again, it's people with early stages of disease take antiretroviral drugs to reduce the chances that they will infect others. This is already being done for breastfeeding mothers. The goal is to get drugs to 90% of HIV positive mothers by 2015, virtually ending mother to child transmission. The main problem is people infected with HIV often don't know, know it right away. Thus, widespread HIV testing needs to happen. And this means that a reliable, inexpensive, privately used saliva test needs to be developed. The fifth way to reduce infection is an AIDS vaccine. It says the science has advanced more than expected. However, plans to conduct research trials are not as aggressive as they should be. Bill says it's still possible to have a vaccine in 12 years by 2024, but luck and better planning will certainly be needed. So moving on to goal two, scaling up treatment. It says there's been amazing progress made. This is mainly due to two entities. First, the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, Tuberculosis, and Malaria. And the second, the U.S. Pro program called PEPFAR, the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief. He said more than 6.6 .6 million people are alive today because they are taking antiretroviral drugs. In 2002, because these drugs were only available in rich countries, it looked like most of these 6.6 .6 million people would die. Says between 2008 and 2010, the Global Fund gave $8 billion for AIDS, malaria, and tuberculosis. So AIDS, they donated $4.6 billion. Malaria, they donated $2.3 billion, and this bought 230 million bed nets, which were key to 20, a 20% 20 decline in malaria deaths since 2002. In tuberculosis, they donated $1.1 billion which this paid for treatment of 8 million TB cases, tuberculosis cases. 
So Bill says, contrary to popular reports, less than 5% of global fund money was misused. It says, with new procedures in place, that percentage will shrink. It says, their foundation is the largest non-government supporter of the global fund, and they've committed $650 million over the years. Bill says he's confident that this is one of the most effective ways that he invests their money each year. So between 2011 and 2013, the Global Fund will disperse $10 billion, which actually is short of the 12 to $14 billion that's needed and was hoped for. Bill says the cost of keeping a patient on AIDS drugs is being reduced to $300 per year. He says that if more people understood this, he believes they would ask their governments to give more. So if you're a U.S. citizen, you can write your senators by going to this URL. As for goal three, finding a cure, as mentioned, it's extremely difficult and not hopeful. So now Bill talks about U.S. education. He says the foundation's work focuses on two related goals. The first is all high school graduates can succeed in college. And the second is young adults who want a post-secondary degree have a way to do so. For K through 12, the top priority is improving the effectiveness of teaching. This is essentially working to try to make average teachers as effective as the best teachers. Bill says every element of today's system is criticized. However, there isn't a strong consensus on what to change. He says most important is identifying and understanding excellence. So teachers have a model of what to strive for. It says 95% of teachers are not given specific feedback on how to improve. Bill and Melinda saw proof that this could work in a school district in Tampa, Florida. So in Tampa, 2% of teachers plus the principals were assigned to become peer evaluators. What peer evaluators do is they observe teaching and provide feedback on 22 components. Thus, peer evaluation among teachers is essential. It says looking at test scores is valuable, but mostly identifies who is succeeding. It doesn't show a teacher what needs to change. So he says another priority of the foundation is accelerating the development, discovery, and use of innovative educational technologies. It says much progress has already been made, but it's still just the beginning. It says teachers need to be better equipped with tools and information to make teaching more personalized and engaging. It says social networking helps teachers and students augment the classroom interactions. He notes Edmodo as an example. He says flipping the classroom, which is when passive activities like lectures are done outside the classroom, and more interactive and collaborative activities take place in the classroom. This is another area of innovation. Khan Academy is a free resource for this. He says companies are also thinking beyond digitizing textbooks. He says C CK through 12 Foundation, Udemy, and Guru, which formerly at Novo, they're creating high quality teacher and community generated content. It says Teachers Pay Teachers has created a powerful community for exchanging lesson plans and other materials. It also says gaming can be impactful. Manga High and Grocket are examples. The professor Zoran Papovich at the University of Washington Center for Game Science is creating games that automatically adapt to each student's unique needs. Bill says to help teachers figure out what's available and right for them, he's launching a project in 2002 to build an online service, or, sorry, 2012, to build an online service that helps educators easily discover and learn how to use these new tools and resources. So now Bill concludes with foundation updates. It says Jeff Reichs, the foundation's CEO, recruited a new head of global health, Trevor Mundell, recruited a new head of global development, Chris Elias, and Alan Golston continues to run the U.S. program. It says in June 2011, the foundation moved to a new campus designed to facilitate collaboration. It said also in June 2011, his father spoke to 10,000 Lions, Lions Club members. 
He spoke about Lyon's impressive work fighting measles. So in 2002, 2,000 people died from measles each day. Now, only 500 die each day. Bill's father encouraged them to keep saving kids' lives. Now Bill talks about the Giving Pledge. And it's, it's a pledge for wealthy individuals and families to give away a majority of their wealth. And it has grown to 69 people. Pledge letters, which are well worth reading, I've read some, can be found at givingpledge.org. In May, the group of pledgers were brought together, and they discovered that they have common goals, and they're exploring co-funding projects. In March 2011, Bill, Melinda, and Warren Buffett were in India, and they spoke with approximately 60 wealthy families about Indian philanthropy and their own experiences. Bill gained insights from the Giving Pledge meeting and India meeting, and he found out that people hold back from being even more generous because they cannot find philanthropic opportunities that make them feel like they are having a significant and unique impact. Excuse me, significant and unique impact. Bill s says he's thinking harder about how to use the web to make it easier for givers to connect to causes and see the results of their giving. So now Bill talks about why he's optimistic. He says, in early 2011, Nicolas Sarkozy, the president of France, invited Bill to be the first ph philanthropist to present at the G20 summit in Cannes. Bill reported on how the G20 can help ensure the poorest are not forgotten as rich countries deal with the significant economic and budget challenges. The report is called Innovation with Impact, Financing 21st Century Development, and it's on GatesFoundation.org. In it, he, he says, there's a diversity of resources available for development. Brazil, India, and China are bringing new experience and expertise to development. So the private sector can work to improve the lives of the poor and help countries develop. Bill says he's excited because innovative partnerships among different organizations could speed development. Bill said he got a strong impression from the leaders of the G20 summit that aid budgets should not be cut, even as their governments reduce their spending. This is only possible if their constituents understand that aid has a significant impact on people's lives and aid is actually less than 1% of the budget in most countries. So lastly, Bill says that many people believe investments in the poorest is money wasted and doesn't get lasting results. He says he and Melinda will spend a lot of 2012 explaining why they're mistaken. He says investments in development has changed the future prospects of billions and it can do the same for billions more with continued investment in innovation.